1965 Admiral combo radio phonograph color television stereo floor furniture piece part two in this part we're going to attempt to resurrect the color television set in part one we uh, woke up the radio which was a little strange if you haven't seen part one go check it out today is December 31st 2020 my goal is to have this thing working and have the ball drop on it. Uh, I believe the ball drops at 9 o'clock our time because I'm in Los Angeles in the West. Also, the previous video part one got pushed out to a whole bunch of new uh, subscribers. If you're new to the channel, welcome. These are not fake videos. I have been involved in television and radio repair, consumer electronics repair, since I was in middle school in the 90s. This was donated by a viewer. In part one, we woke the CRT up with the Beltron. Uh, I have no idea. I have not gone any further than that on the television chassis. Let's plug the radio in and see if it is still awake or what happens. I think we're going to have to wake the TV up slowly with a Variac. I think that would be the, the best bet because I'd really like to have this thing going by tonight. I kind of have all day to, to make something happen with it. Let's see what can happen. If we do get it to work and we do get the ball to drop, it's going to be a horrible picture because of this cataract in the CRT. And if we're successful tomorrow being the first of 2021, I'll pull the CRT out and we'll uh, do the cataract on it. Okay, well, it looks like the radio stayed awake. Floyd was a lynching. You've also said that his mother and the demonstrations that have followed show that uh, uh, America is a failed social experiment. So could you respond to that and also... Okay, well on that note, let's uh, dig right into the TV. While the chassis is out, we're going to go through and just do a little visual inspection. It's always good to start with a visual inspection on these things. And... Um, this is definitely bad. In general, you can never tell if a vacuum tube is bad, except for when you see this. When you see this, that means the envelope is cracked and it's got air in it. So, this one is bad, 6GH8. But we'll go through and we'll test the rest of these. We will remove this brightener. These capacitors here are in question, these white. Uh, th these are very problematic and if I was if I was going to use this TV, put this into any kind of regular service, these would definitely go. These not so much, the red ones. Also, this, the horizontal output looks like it might. When you get this white ring here and the getter is starting to go, this, this circle right here is the same as this shiny thing that turned white on that one. Kind of explaining this for anyone who might be new watching this video. Now when you see the ring starting to cook away like that, that means the thing's either got a lot of hours on it or it's possible that something went wrong and this thing got extremely hot and red plated. I'm going to use this, the uh, Mighty Might TC162. Uh, it might not be the most thorough tester in the world, but I'm used to it. 
and it checks for grid leakage and shorts. This is a 6HZ6. This is the, uh, and I'm on 5 volts, which is basically like doing a life test. So I'm just going to go through these, and we should have, I think, two or three of these 6HZ6s. These are the 6EW6. Let's see. There should be several of these in here. 6GX4. It's nice if you just get your tube tester set up and then go through and test all the similar tubes but you know we'll just do it like this 6EW6 which is probably almost the same I should probably be checking these against the tube chart that might be a good idea Six EW six six D one four six D one four. Okay, what I did is I took a picture of the tube chart. We'll just go through these and verify that actually the right thing is in there. So let's do the first video six EJ seven. Okay, this one is kind of tired if I go up to 6 volts. You know, it, it wakes up. But basically going to 5 volts is the same thing as using the life test. It's just, if you use a life test, it starts to drop. So... This is a 6FQ7, and I believe this is the horizontal oscillator, horizontal multivibrator, yeah, horizontal oscillator and control. Um, very common dual triode. We had grid leakage a minute ago. I don't know what happened. This one might be on the replace me list because if this one doesn't work right that tube melts so D2 and D7 it was weird how it had uh, grid leakage before I picked the camera up and now it doesn't so we might change that one out now 6 FQ7 and 6 GU7 which are these two are the same basically uh, these are what drive the color into the picture tube I don't like videoing testing tubes. It's extremely boring for a lot of people. Some people like it, but... Go down to 5 volts here. seems happy this tube sockets a little worn out this section here this board is responsible for decoding the colors the decol Let's try that again. This board here is responsible for decoding the color information and sending it to the tube as something we can enjoy. 
this here is uh, what was this audio and vertical this is the IF Now this is a 6FQ7, the vertical output, and look at the grid leakage just is showing. I mean that would almost 6GF7, 6GF7, 6C25, C25, uh, G95. G pegged grid leakage on both. So does this show shorts? Let's see. No shorts. This socket is extremely worn out. I don't know what to think of this. Everything checks out here uh, except these two were the ones that initially had grid leakage that kind of mysteriously went away. I don't know. It's very damp out here right now and it rained a whole lot the other day. And yes, the TV was covered up under multiple layers. But if there's just a microscopic film of condensation on this thing this will pick it up as grid leakage so it doesn't yeah I think this is history see the green pin there see that I bet this is gassy the air is getting in it and these things are trying to eat up the air yeah when you get green creeping crust like that that pretty much means that it's history and this is an expensive tube you go and buy this brand new you're looking at 30 to 50 bucks yeah I think this is toast you look at the very very dull orange glow in there at 6 volts because it's filled with air let's uh let's put some fire to this thing let's see what happens we'll go up to 10 volts We're going to pop it because it's see how dim it is even at 10 volts because it's not in a deep vacuum and it's getting hot too. Yeah, this thing's dead as dead can get. Too bad. Okay, well, we'll have to find another one of these. But yeah, you get corrosion like this. They get water. The corrosion breaches the hermetic seal between the pin and the glass, and it starts to suck. Boy, did that get hot. Starts to suck air into it. And notice, just in getting it hot on the tester, these things have gone almost completely clear. All right, let's do the uh, 3A3. I'm sorry, 3DC3. Speaking of these high-voltage rectifier tubes, it makes me think of Stan at uh, ESRC who didn't make it this year and uh, was probably one of the largest vacuum tube warehouse sellers 
out there and it's just gone. The guy died and his kids want nothing to do with it and over a million vacuum tubes gone. And I used to buy these. He always had a, a one dollar tube list and all of these, most of these TV tubes were in that one dollar list because of course there's only a handful of people in the whole country who are doing TVs. So I used to buy a lot of these high voltage rectifiers from that one dollar list. So one of the losses of 2020 was uh, Stan at ESRC vacuum tubes. I'm thinking it might be prudent to pull the tuner out right now while the chassis is still out and clean and service it. And I see one of the wires here is broken off for the antenna. So let me see what there is involved in this. Okay, you know what? This thing is not easy to get to, so I'm just spraying the things right here. Try and work these back and forth a little bit. You know, hopefully, hopefully this thing works. They just condemned it because the CRT was, that's interesting. They condemned the TV because the CRT, but we, we don't, we don't know. Color fidelity, I wonder what that does. Just a note on why I wear these stupid gloves. You know, everybody that I grew up with that worked on this stuff, they all died miserable deaths. And uh, these things right here are loaded with lead, tin, cadmium, all kinds of toxic metals. And that's why I've taken only working on this stuff outside. And not to mention the damn chemicals I just sprayed in this, it aerosolized and went all over the place. So, yeah, I'm trying to, trying to uh, minimize the exposure to the garbage. Yeah, you because know, you touch solder, it gets in your skin, and yeah, you can wash it out, but... You know, if you pull solder between your fingers, it actually leaves a lead mark. So, yeah, I don't even like touching 6040 or 6337 solder anymore, or whatever that f mixture is. I don't like touching it. I've, I've had enough lead in my life. Don't need any more brain damage than I already obviously have. So, all right, everything's been sprayed. I don't know about this tuner. It, it jams. We'll just have to just have to see what happens. It's a nice across the line one of these bombs. Let's see what have we got here? Two thousand volt. What the hell is this? Zero zero four seven. Huh. That should probably go. What do we got here? These, this has a lot of these crappy capacitors in it. This one, this is, this is across the vertical output transformer. Those I like to short. There's another one. It's all your pin cushion correction. I have an Admiral roundy and the main difference between it, its chassis and this chassis is this stuff right here. This is what makes it uh, possible to use a uh, rectangular CRT. Makes it possible is probably not the right terminology, but it is required to, for pincushion correction. As I mentioned in part one, there's no speaker in here. And it doesn't look like it ever had a speaker. But yet, 
it has what look like speaker wires that would connect onto a speaker. So unless this, I don't see anywhere where it would have connected onto the uh, amplifier unless it connected right there. Those two pins that are not used. Okay, so that's what happens. When you turn on the TV, it, this has also got a switch on it that disconnects the speakers from the tuner and connects it to the television chassis. That makes sense why it uses a 6BQ5 for the audio output, but where does that connect? I can't see it. I didn't remove the chassis. Chassis was removed to uh, reduce weight, I think, for tran when we moved it. Okay, after looking at this for a half hour, I believe that's correct. That's where that connects. Um, the RCA that plugs into the tuner is broken. I don't know. The antenna wires just completely broke off here, so I can deal with that. Variac and watt meter time and a slow resurrection. Power's on. The watt meter is on the input to the Variac. And it doesn't look like anybody's home. Okay, I wiggled this around a little bit. And it seems like now we're doing something, so... And it seems like we're not doing something, so... Oh, there we go. So we got a bad connection here. So, here we go. Uh, let me bring it up some. It's at about 50 volts. See how it's dropping as the capacitors? Well, it's a combination of the filaments warming up and the capacitors reforming. So what I want to do is I want to get a um, test adapter socket and a horizontal output tube. I'll show you. I have a used horizontal output tube in here. This is kind of my sacrificial one. It's pretty tired. I have the test adapter socket on it. This pin sticking out of the test adapter socket is a control grid so we can watch what is coming out of this tube here. And I have cathode current. This is cathode current for this tube. So what I'm doing is I'm just going up real slow. Uh, I'm not in any hurry here. Just, uh, I'm going to keep this disconnected, and once I get up around 100 volts, I'm not going to leave the tube plugged in for too long. Just going up real slow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up over the course of about 30 minutes or so. Just uh, bump it up 15 volts and then go have something to eat and come back and bump it up another 15 volts. I'm really not in any hurry. I'm trying to save these back here from possible replacement. They might already be dead, but, you know. I was going to say, at some point, we should see this control grid go negative, meaning that that oscillator tube there is running, and it just did. So that's a good sign. Now, I could put a scope on that and look at the waveform, which I might do, and the peak-to-peak. -peak. But yeah, it's coming up here. The negative voltage indicates that the oscillator, the horizontal oscillator, is running. Okay, this is a pretty crappy-looking signal with that spike in the middle of it. And we're at 25 kilohertz. And our peak to peak is 48 volts, which should be 200, but we're still way low on the Variac. 
So let's come up some more here. See I'm at 70 volts. Let's go up to uh, 85. We're up to 118 watts. And look at that, it cleaned right up. And we're at 15.6 kilohertz now, which is should be about 15.5. 133 volts peak to peak. So that's a beautiful waveform going into the horizontal output tube. That's what it should look like. Ooh, we have a little static. Light's actually starting to... Nobody there, but like I said, the RCA was bad. There we go. Exciting. Everybody's cold. Okay, let's come up a little bit more. Right on frequency. Maybe a little low. Boy, hmm. Getting that burning smell, that hot dust. Hasn't been used in 50 years. CRT is not lighting up. Maybe it is. Oh yeah, there it is, okay. So we're drawing 200 watts, 215 watts, with the horizontal output tube disconnected. This set should probably use around 320. And we'll go up to 115 volts. Starting to get some screen. Two hundred volts peak to peak. That's right where it should be. Two hundred sixty five watts. Are we ready? Remember, this tube is very weak. And it's coming up slowly. See the, the brown line there? That's about where it should be. See, I've screwed with all of these. I don't know what's what here. Um, oh, 
we have a raster. Of course, it's very dim because I don't know what's what. Get a piece of wire and see if we could get channel six. Yeah, I got a I got a piece of wire. There's channel six. If you're not familiar with this channel in Los Angeles, San Diego, we still have a low power analog TV station on channel 6. I don't know what that high-pitched squeal is. I've never heard that on a TV before. It looks very blurry, like there's no focus voltage. It looks like garbage. Very blurry. Wait, I think I found the squeal. Okay, I moved this tube around. This is the focus rectifier. And... I almost dare say this thing is working. I mean, I see a picture in there. Ella tiene una frase que yo la hice mía, pero es de ella, se llama Samantha Mesina. Y ella dice, si pasa por tu agenda, pasa por tu Yeah, I see a picture there. Y escuchándola yo me hice esta that? reflexión. A ver, ¿por qué se... Donde todos los días voy a misa. Still cold. I am going to get rid of the Variac. Bueno, pues... There is a picture there. Fui con nuestro señor. Y entonces algún día, programa de la mañana... Y a las pocas cuadras me toca un accidente. Ya sabes el caos que se hace cuando hay un accidente. Total, tuve que esperar That's un ratito. Channel 6, low power analog. Wow. Gente, ay señor, no puede ser. Try and figure out what is what here. That 
absolutely no idea. Looks like it's horizontal. That's vertical. So what are we looking at here? Oh, crosshatch. Oh, boy, is that jacked up. Wow, is the convergence off, the verticals off. Let's try color bars. Now, you know what I need to do? I need to mark these damn things. Stand by. Okay. So this is horizontal. This one is horizontal. So let's put a little H next to this one. Okay, this one was vertical, right? Yeah, this one's vertical. And I think this one is brightness. Yeah, this one is brightness. And then we get color fidelity. I don't know, that seems to adjust to something. Um, that's a brilliant statement. And we have tone, volume. These three are a mystery here. Oh, this is some... I don't know what these are. This yellow one is like contrast. That one's brightness. The yellow one looks like contrast. Okay, so we have red, blue, and then color fidelity. Let's make sure we'll, these are turned all the way up. Let's see if we can get the color to come in. Sometimes color demodulation is one of the hardest things to get to work on these old sets. Oh, not on this one. That was just turning the fine tuning. The sens the sensitivity of the tuner is pretty lackluster. Okay, so let's see. Okay, this is tint. Blue is tint. Red is color level. Okay, so what does this one do? We don't know what this one does. That's the outside one. What does color fidelity do? Color fidelity looks like it tilts. Color fidelity looks like it cranks blue up and down, actually. Yeah, it's kind of obvious the yoke is tilted here, isn't it? So let's pull that up straight. Okay, that's pretty good. EIA color bars, that's pretty pitiful. How could you even tell with this cataract? Okay, the performance of the tuner is much better on channel 3 than channel 4. Um, look at that. And then I'm going to go to 4 here. I'm going to go to 4 here. Look at that. So the sensitivity of the tuner is much better on three. So we'll use three. If 
effect the sensitivity is massively better look at how absolutely horrific the convergence is on this I mean, I, I almost feel like doing the cataract right now, but could I do the cataract and have it back together for the ball drop? I don't know. This is a simple Geiger counter. Let's um, see what the background is right here. The TV is over there. I know this thing's pretty accurate because I took it up. So the background is 10 right here. This is supposed to have metal on it. This is not supposed to be open like this. I don't know how effective this is at picking up x-rays, but... So the background went from 10 to 22. The average is 14 now. So it definitely goes up when you get near that high voltage cage. Three minutes, I wonder how many people I've lost. It definitely goes, the radiation definitely goes up around the TV. I switched to the leader because I think it works a little bit better. So tonight we'll adjust the focus and then align our center dot here you can see the green red and blue how far off it is and yeah I was thinking about doing the cataract today but I kinda wanna show what it looks like with and without the cataract so this this area right here is the only good area of the whole set Okay, this is red raster. I'm going to start with a little degaussing. Not that it really needs it, but let's just start here because everybody likes the psychedelic thingy. Didn't make one bit of difference, did it? So that's red blue, green, red's a little dark, that's white. I gotta say I'm really struggling with this one. The cataract is really making the whole thing so damn blurry that I cannot see. Okay, what I've discovered works, what I can do is use the mirror and see the dot right there I lined every, all three colors up on the dot so the dot is pure and I actually got got it pretty close Cut it out. And now I've got it compressed at the top. This thing has some pin cushion issues, doesn't it? Look at the with the pin cushion issues at the bottom. The bottom is still. So now that I move the yoke, now I gotta recenter the convergence. Uh, I mean, it's not bad now. I, I got it decent. You know, for.
what's hilarious is how bad the cataract is on this, which that'll go away tomorrow, but let's hook it up and see if we can watch some TV here. God, the cataract is so bad in this. It's horrible. And live and work in the spiritual world. from Master Chef Shukra Khanna. Shubra's Kitchen, weekdays at 2.30. Only on Via TV. Welcome back after the break. Let's now take you to an evening of devotional singing. The disciple of Vidushi Girja Devi. Astha Goswami offered some very okay, unique compositions. I got to figure the... out how to change the box to channel 4 or channel 3 because it's set on 4 and we know that the receiver is the tuner is not uh, very good on channel 4. So god the got to love the trash truck in the background, you know. Okay, that should have changed it to channel three. The cataract makes it so hard. There we go, see how much better it looks? Oh yeah, high, high def, look at this. Don't miss the year-end sales event. People are, people are under this impression that the ball is gonna drop and all is gonna be well. <laughs> I don't think that's the case, sorry. Things are not going to miraculously get better when the clock rolls over. It's probably going to keep getting worse, actually. What? Did you want a big red bow? For staying with us for this, we hope for a much better 2021 for everyone. Happy New Year to you all. Thank you, Real Watchers. Happy for New that. Year. Thousands showing up to celebrate 2021 in Wuhan, China, where the pandemic began. Check out our news at 9 next. Should I laugh at that? Welcome to KCOM My News at 9, and we're streaming on CBSN Los Angeles on this New Year's Eve. I'm Sarah Donchi. We are just seconds away from saying goodbye, and for many people, good riddance to 2020 on the East Coast. This is a live look from the New Year's Eve celebration in Times Square, certainly one like we have never seen before. One year ago, this very minute, there were people packed shoulder to shoulder, cheering as the ball fell. Now, certainly a different scene, a much more empty Times Square, a handful of first responders and families. And let's go ahead and listen in to the ball dropping right now as it becomes 2021 on the East Coast. families of first responders, families of healthcare workers, uh, social distancing was in effect, but this is being uh, telecast, of course, and people are watching from home. Uh, definitely a different year, 2020, and a lot of people looking forward to putting this year behind them, uh, but some people certainly looking forward to a healthier and happier 2021. Obviously, we're going to continue to take a look at New Year's Eve celebrations all over the world uh, as we say goodbye to 2020 on the East Coast there in New York City. All right, back here to the West, we have some breaking news closer to home in Eagle Rock. A pursuit has ended, and now there is an ongoing standoff situation. The suspect is in this white sedan with a tarp on top of it that has just been pinned by LAPD. If you're wondering where in Eagle Rock this is happening on Yosemite in Highland View, 
if you are familiar with that area that is just beyond the Yosemite Rec Center, which is directly adjacent to Eagle Rock High School, Yosemite being a major thoroughfare through the, the neighborhood, the community of Eagle Rock there. Um, as you can see, LAPD officers appear to be trying to get the suspect to uh, give up, but that hasn't happened. In the last few minutes, we have seen that person actually try and get out of what was a really tight situation, but LAPD advanced with that cruiser and pin this person in even more. Again, this is the end of a pursuit. We're going to continue to follow this. This is the moment that I mentioned where... Okay, well, very quickly when they there you go. Tomorrow we will do the uh, CRT cataract. I'll yank the chassis, we'll pull the CRT, uh, get it out, do the cataract, and then see how much better it looks, because right now it's absolutely horrible. So, I guess we'll say goodbye to 2020 like this.